So what I got here is a waste oil heater built. Um, what you see here is basically called an air atomizing nozzle. I believe the company was Delavan that built the one I've got. You can buy a holder for these. They're about 30, 40 bucks. I've got a lathe and I'm cheap as hell, so I just made one. This one actually has a heater element in it. The trouble is with trying to burn waste oils, if you use stuff like synthetic, it doesn't want to burn very well when it's cold. So this helps with the starting capability. All right now, so it won't really wired or anything. And uh, don't ask me how I get power to it. But what we got is an air supply line. It only runs about 12 PSI. And then a waste oil feed. These are actually made for heating oil. So they're made to, they actually draw a vacuum on this line. The problem is heating oil is quite a bit uh, thinner, lower viscosity than waste oil. So if waste oil, you have two options. You can either preheat the oil and you place it in a holding tank about oh, three to four inches below the level of the nozzle. Or the other option is to uh, pressurize oil to it, which is what I've done. So what I've got is a setup. It's just a 30 gallon barrel. And this is actually a pump for, let me turn this off, it's kind of noisy. This is actually a pump for a heating oil uh, system. Now the difference is that this is running, typically runs about 100 to 120 PSI and the purpose being that they actually atomize the oil out of those nozzles with pure pressure. They don't use air to assist it. In this case all I'm using it for is to draw oil from the tank and bring it over to the nozzle at a, a pressure of anywhere from about 3 to 12 PSI depending on how cold it is. Originally it was all metered off this little needle valve here. The problem being though that as close as the stove is to the barrel, this actually gets warm or sometimes even hot to the touch just from the radiant heat. And the problem is you have to readjust this every like five or 10 minutes. Originally this setup was actually driven off this motor with this a flat belt pulley and ran at a constant speed. So you had to screw with this valve to actually adjust the oil flow rate. And I got tired of you know constantly going back and resetting it because it'd be either too hot or it's too cold. It's just a pain in the ass. So what I ultimately did was I made a stepper driver. So I got a stepper motor. This is just an adapter I made um, to adapt the two together. There's a, I don't know what they call it, it's a type of coupling. It's like a spiral wound piece of wire, or in this case it's actually machined. It allows for some misalignment to happen. I've got a box I built here. This is controlled off an Arduino. Inside is a transformer and a capacitor bank. And so the motor actually runs at somewhere around I think it's 35 volts. It tends to pull down to about 32 to 30 whenever you run full power. Um, and then of course there's a loud ass fan in it because I've got a linear regulator stepping that down to 12 volts with Arduino. I really need to get a switching regulator. But the way this thing is set up to work is I've actually got it where I can edit parameters. Everything's stored in EEPROM. I just basically tell what the minimum speed and the maximum speed is and how many steps to allow in between. So to start it, I just hold this down for three seconds. It'll give me a countdown. In my case, I'm manually lighting it right now with a propane torch, so I need some time to get back to the stove, get the torch nearby the nozzle. But after the countdown, it'll start the pump at, I think I got to set it the uh, fourth speed. So right now, I don't have this actually opened up. Um, so this regulator, I, I put a, a lighter spring in here, it's only around about 20 PSI at deadhead. It can put out 100 to 120. But so the motor's just running at a steady speed, somewhere around, I think it's anywhere from about 80 RPM down to about 20 is the flow rates I have right now. And I don't know what that correlates to. I know this nozzle runs approximately a gallon an hour. So you, you've got a fairly decent amount of heat, especially as little time as it's been out in the shop. But so I can either, well, I stopped it by accident. But I can either bump it up or bump it down. When I stop it, I actually have a program to reverse the motor for about five seconds. The purpose being that any air trapped in this line to the nozzle and the assembly, that'll allow that oil to actually hold some pressure for a period of time after you stop it. So if you want to do an e-stop, you need to do something to take care of that pressure. So it actually backs up and draws the oil back out and this it pulls the pressure down pretty quick that way. The nozzle itself still has a valve here. The uh, problem is that's not a perfectly sealed system. It can still gravity feed back to the tank or back from the tank. So this is just a way to shut it down for the day. Helps it out. As far as pressure goes, I just got a regulator here. It's being fed about 20 PSI from another one across the shop. And so you usually run it about 12 PSI. You get a pretty decent amount of airflow out of here. You know, this is, I think, close to three, 
see of him or so. So the problem though is that you can get a lot of heat buildup uh, between the stove and the nozzle. And the issue being that there's an O-ring here that seals the two passages together and also these lines only handle so much temperature is why I have this standpipe on either end to help drop that temperature from the nozzle down to the lines. So I've got a steel washer machine and you can see how hot it gets. It actually blued it. So I think that's somewhere close to four or 500 degrees. So that fits on the front of the nozzle holder. I'm going to have fiberglass rope to act as an insulator. Same kind of rope you see on a, the lid of the stove, only this is smaller stuff. And that just fits right there. On the side of the stove, I've got a hole cut in it. Practically ruined the stove to do this, actually. And this is a spring-loaded clamping bar to hold it in place. Inside the stove is a flame holder. Uh, the problem is, without that, at least in a, a big, wide-open void like this, is that the stove itself or the flame can't sustain and I'm almost convinced that the flame holder does more to just give the oil a place to pull and create kind of a a bit of a flame effect to hold it than anything else and that keeps it lit otherwise without it it would just blow out right away so I'll go ahead and show you um, how the flow rate looks out of it this line I just added in um, I relocated the stove and the barrels so I need a longer line to reach across so we'll go ahead and open this up Like I said earlier, it's just a valve to help reduce back drain. I also have one on the other end. So we'll tell it to start. Now it's running. So that's the floor, or setting of four, almost maximum. If I bring it all the way down to one, you can see it's not very much oil at all. Uh, I'd wager, well, I don't know, it's less than a gallon a minute, or sorry, gallon an hour. It's probably closer to maybe a quarter or so. Bring this back up. This is the maximum flow rate I have it set for. This actually, at this rate, it smokes just a little bit. So it's only really used for uh, preheating the oven. Better than that, I turn it down a little bit. But you can see it's not very much. It's just a tiny amount of flow. One of the key things you want, though, is that you want as little air as possible. Any air you have in the lines getting picked up by the pump, um, you know, for many linkages, basically on the suction side, can cause the flame to go out. So. You want as much oil, or the oil to be as consistent as you can so that you have a steady flame. So as I talked about earlier, um, I've got a preheater. I won't use the torch to point, that's, that's dumb. So I've got a preheater, all this is is a 15 watt uh, soldering iron heater. And inside is actually a hollow tube, so I've got the, that section plugged off just because any air void in here acts as a bit of an accumulator, it makes it harder to shut down. You may find it odd that I have cooling fins on here. That's because when it's hot, I don't want to cook the oil too much. You know, oil comes in here, it passes down through a passage into the nozzle. Um, so it's kind of a weird balance. You can have it too hot, you can have it too cold. And so at least for now, what we'll do, because I don't want to show you the wrong way and give you guys stupid ideas on how to handle 110 volts. Uh, you know, it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. I do plan on, on making that a proper connection one of these days. But I'll go ahead and preheat this a little bit. All you really want it to be is just, just warm to the touch. It doesn't have to be hot. Ultimately, I want to automate the stove some. Um, I want to have a flame detector in it, and I want to be able to handle turning on and off the air automatically. As, you know, the oil is already handled by the stepper motor, as well as turning on this heating element. But I'm going to wait to do that until I finally build a proper stove for this. I don't want to do it here while I'm trying to just do my trials and tribulations on this wood stove. And it's no worth, not worth putting more holes in it than I already have. That should be good enough. Yeah, just warm. So I'll go ahead and try to start this. Um, first, so I've already got my torch lit, just because I don't have three arms right now. It's kind of hard to balance everything. It's already pre-warmed, so it's going to start easier than it would cold. But we'll go ahead and tell it to start. We've got 15 seconds. It's going to happen pretty soon. Keep in mind that waste oil has heavy metals such as zinc, lead, iron, copper um, contained within it. And so you're, you're essentially trying to burn that stuff and that is getting released out. So while it may be safe from 20 feet after it's diluted out in the air, doesn't mean you need to get a face full of it here when you light the stove. So actually a lot of times I actually hold my breath because it does, when it's cold and there's no draft, there is some smoke that comes out. But uh, just something to keep in mind, you know, waste oil, it's got its risks. Uh, the nice thing is though is that running a stepper drive like I am, 
really allows you to regulate it. And I'll show you here in a bit exactly what it looks like at a full output. So I've had the stove running for about 30 minutes now. Um, you can see even at about half flow rate, we're sitting around four to 500 degrees on the outlet temp. And I run this thing wide open. I don't try to choke it like you with a wood stove. The reason being that this thing really needs as much air as it can get. Even though the, the atomizing nozzle is pushing some air into the system, if I was to close that door, it would choke the flame out. So, you see here, like the flame. And we'll go ahead and turn it all the way up to full. Full rate. Now granted, this is with it warmed up. When it's cold, it's not quite that much. But then we can turn it all the way down to one, I hope. I don't like running it there though. It's got a higher risk of flaming out. So typically, right about two is good for a steady state. And even if it's been running here, this should still be, yeah, it's not too hot. The fins do a nice job of keeping this whole housing fairly cool so I don't push that o-ring. Um, we'll go ahead and stop it. So hit stop, and you can see it almost immediately goes out. And it does get quite hot. A lot of that's the slag from the oil residue, but some of the housing itself is actually glowing as well. The big thing is that once you do shut it down, you want to continue to let it have some air uh, just to, I better go ahead and shut this off. You want the air to help cool the nozzle down. You know, this stove can get rather hot and it can cook that nozzle and the o-ring and everything else if you just shut off the air right away. So usually running the air for about 15 minutes after the shelf is shut off is good enough to, to take care of that. So even at full tilt, and uh, it's a little better when it's warm. When it's cold, there is a bit of a haze, but you can see it's, it's really not too bad. Um, one of the things is, is that uh, you know there is a, an air, air to fuel ratio essentially. So you wanna try to choke it down enough to where it's not really smoking out your neighbors. And you certainly can with this setup. If I uh, if I unrestricted the high end a little better, because I can set it to run at a faster speed, it can really really create some uh, some smoke. And uh, don't mind the mess here, kind of in between trying to clean up projects. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Enjoy.